Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Tech News Show. What? Huh? What, what is this? What is that? One more time with feeling. Hey guys, welcome back to the Tech News Show! No! I love it! No. So now that the big boy phones from Apple and OnePlus are announced, Motorola and LG have arrived to hawk their wares as well. The Motorola Edge Plus is the company's first real flagship tier phone in four years, and it's got the specs to match. Still don't care. Exactly. Snapdragon 865, 12 gigs of RAM, a 90 hertz screen, and a 108 megahertz, megahertz? megapixel sensor as part of its triple rear camera setup. But Motorola appears to think the phone's big innovation is its curved edge waterfall display. Never seen that before. That's straight out of a Samsung phone circa 2016. And it also costs a thousand bucks. Get out of here. Hello, Moto. <laughs> LG, on the other hand, unveiled their velvet phone with a Snapdragon 765 inside, with the most interesting feature being a headphone jack, and I mean... Actually interesting. Yeah, that alone makes me want it more than the Moto. I'm sorry, Motorola. You were so cool once. You should try bringing back the Razer. Ah, you tried that. A security vulnerability in iOS has been actively exploited by hackers since at least January 2018, according to a report published by cybersecurity firm ZecOps. The bug allows an infected email to run malware on iPhones and iPads without even needing the user to open the email. The malware doesn't grant hackers control over the full device, but does allow control over emails in the Apple Mail app. That's enough. Can you imagine someone just creating hundreds of drafts, which I then have to sort through to find the real ones? Horrible. That's the, that's the worst scenario I could come up with. Drunk drafting? Apple says a patch is coming to fix the vulnerability, but if you're worried, you can use Gmail or another email client because those aren't affected by this bug. And really, you should have been doing that already. Apple mail. <laughs> and if you needed a final shove to switch from playing CSGO to Valorant, the full source code for CSGO and Team Fortress 2 has leaked. It's unclear how the code got out, with some accusing Tyler McVicker of Valve News Network. McVicker denies this, though, and says he's cooperating with Valve's legal team to get to the bottom of this. Now, the code is actually from 2017, so it might not be completely up to date, but the leak has ignited fears that bad actors could develop exploits based on the code and hack your PC while you're trying to headshot people. Acting career didn't turn out? <laughs> hack people. <laughs> Bad actors, oof. So you might wanna take a break from collecting hats or skins or whatever until the whole thing is sorted out. I think that's what those games are about. Now it's time for the Quick Bits, brought to you by Pluralsight. It's the skill development platform that's making all 7,000 of their expert-led video courses and more free for the month of April. I mean, you're staying home. You might as well emerge from your cocoon of genius tech-savvy butterfly, right? Pluralsight is making it easy for individuals, businesses, nonprofits, educators, and students to stay home and skill up in popular tech topics and programming languages like JavaScript, Python, C Sharp, and more. So click the link below to start Pluralsight free for April and see where your tech skills could take you. Huh, quick bits? Oh yeah. <laughs> but Valorant's got its own problems. Gamers have criticized the game's anti-cheat software and in particular, its kernel level driver. In response, developer Riot Games says it's launching an expanded bug bounty program, which will pay those who discover security vulnerabilities. But no bounty is gonna make those characters as cool as the Overwatch gang. Make an Overwatch movie, Blizzard. Just do it. AMD has finally launched the low end of the third gen Ryzen lineup with the Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X, both featuring four cores, eight threads, and a 65 watt TDP. Team Red also officially unveiled the B550 chipset, which will bring PCIe 4.0 support in a budget package when motherboard makers actually launch compatible models. The Ryzen 3 3100 will go for 100 bucks with a 3300X at 120 bucks. Pretty good, huh, James? New features are being added to video calling apps in abundance now that more people are working from home with the latest innovation being noise reduction. I'm boarding in a minute, but let's dive in real quick. Google Meet added the feature this week and Nvidia actually released noise reduction software called RTX Voice. Although as Barnacles himself pointed out, with a small tweak, you don't actually need an RTX card to run it. Although it would undoubtedly be decidedly less glorious. I love that guy. 
Speaking of Nvidia, the company's GeForce Now game streaming service has gained a few more Ubisoft titles, while at the same time losing other titles from Xbox Game Studios and Warner Bros. To compensate users, Nvidia will make the service free until June, so if you want to play Ubisoft games and basically nothing else, and oh happy day, Fortnite has finally made it onto the Play Store. Although it's not quite a happy day for Epic Games as the move means that the company has essentially lost its big fight with Google over paying the 30% distribution tax. Google says it's better for apps like Fortnite to be on the, on the store instead of outside the store to protect from malware. But have you seen all the malware written apps on the Play Store lately, Google? Are any of them Fortnite though? That's a good point. I didn't think about that. All right, that's enough of this nonsense. Come back on Friday for more tech news. I'll have it piping hot and ready for you. Dad, jeez. Really loud, eh? Hopefully that's not gonna be there. No promises. All right.